Welcome to Kiss the Reviews. I'm Armando, that's Corey, and today we are doing, what movie are we doing? 1992's Rapid Fire. Before we get started, if you want to follow us on the social medias, you can follow us at Kiss the Reviews on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, you can also, if you'd like, on YouTube, we won't have any of the, the clips of the movies because demonetization and things. So we started our Patreon page. You could join us over there for a couple of bucks. We have a few different tiers and you get all the clips, you get pre-show um, stuff and banter. Um, you also get, depending on the tier, you get exclusive uh, stickers, mini prints, coffee mugs, t-shirts, and all that stuff for, for being Playboy a member. calendars, yes. spider legs, witch's brew. Yep. Sage. Yeah. I don't I don't know. And we're we also will be doing and are doing uh watch parties. So depending on on your tier, you'll be invited to watch a movie with us and basically watch us make fun of shit in real time. Hell yes. Be uh before we jump into this, let's do the cast. So Rapid Fire stars Brandon Lee as Jake Lowe, Powers Booth as Mace Ryan. Nick Mancuso as Antonio Serrano, Raymond Berry as Agent Stewart, and Kate Hodge as Carla Withers. This movie, I don't really remember when I saw the name. I was like, oh yeah, Rapid Fire. And then I saw this movie and I was like, don't remember this at all. <laughs> I was a huge fan of this movie. Um, but that was like mid-puberty. And now that like logic has come into play. I'm like, dude, this is a piece of shit. The rapper? Yep. Logic <laughs> called me and like, yo, watch Rapid Fire. <laughs> and don't commit schmooicide. And I was like, you got it, buddy. Good times. Good times. Uh, Thanks, no, man. I don't I, I don't remember this at all. Um, I, I'll, I'll say this. As, as, much as, as much as I love Brandon Lee, and especially in The Crow, he's done some bad movies. Well, he, yeah, he did, he, he, he did, did some bad, he, he did some, bad. I was going to correct you. And then I'm like, no, that's kind of fucked up. And then you corrected <laughs> yourself. So I was like, yeah, I'll go with it. You know, words and things. It's about um, time you take some of the heat in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but I say we just jump right into this one. So the intro, because the intro to this movie is probably one of my favorite and I don't know if Brandon Lee, because now this is this is number two for Brandon Lee, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you have the Dolph Lundgren joint and then this one. Mm -hmm. The intros are so ridiculous. Like this one, intros, it's like some sweet like karate moves by Brandon Lee kicking ass and just being fucking awesome. Yeah, between this and Showdown in Little Tokyo, um, this shows that nepotism really isn't all it's cracked up to be. You still got to <laughs> grind a little bit because they put this dude in some bullshit. With that face, that type bod, and those karate <laughs> skills, and you're doing these two movies where you got to admire Dolph Lundgren's dick and be a fucking college student while a bunch of moron cops are running around not solving crimes. Yes. You got you to gotta put in that grind. You're not, you can't yeah. all be Jack Quaid who just walks into like fucking the boys and is an international <laughs> superstar. That's the good exactly. side of nepotism. This is the bad yes. side. Exactly. Exactly. But so the, the movie then opens uh, into a small Asian village. Tony gets to his destination via boat. He meets his longtime friend, Tommy. And did you know, I don't know if you noticed this or not, or if you caught this in the, in the, in the dialogue, it's been 20 years since they, they last saw each other. 20 years to get you to come to my country, my friend. 20 years. Can you believe it's been 20 years, Tony? No, they made it very clear. Very clear. And if I could offer this quickly. Corey's Life Lessons. Hi. Asian heroin dealers or whatever you are. Um, <laughs> Uncle Corey here. When like 
a, a foreign representative comes over and is like, yeah, I'm moving in on your business. You're giving me your end. And there's like a guy with them and your whole gang is there in your country and your territory. Just fucking kill the guy. What yeah. are you? What are you even like? I'm gonna demonstrate my sick bow skills like I'm fucking Donatello from the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Calm down, <laughs> handle your business, and kill this man. And there is literally no movie. It's over. Yes. yes. Well, that's the that's the funny thing about this is they're oh my friend, I haven't seen you in 20 years. Cool, let's go watch this Kumite fight or whatever the hell. Mm-hmm. And, and they're watching this, and in this scene, and then in. in other scenes that are upcoming, they basically talk that about like how Tony Serrano has like lost all control of his shit. He's got no money. He's like <laughs> hanging on by a thread. But like you know, being being the uh, the spicy Dago that he is, he's like, hey, now I'm moving in on your shit, and you're giving me your. I, I need to wet my beak, and you need to give me fucking a little piece of, of your action. Um, this goes back to what you just said, but it also goes back to a a couple of other reviews we did. Mm -hmm. If you're at somebody else's home, Mm -hmm. okay, you play by their rules. They don't allow shoes. You take your fucking shoes off. They don't allow like smoking. Then you go outside to smoke. You don't just go in and go, Hey, there's a great refrigerator. What the fuck is in it? I'm going to eat half your shit. Like that's what he's doing here. And oh, then dude, all this guy's acting like t- a white woman taking Brooklyn back. <laughs> like it's all mine Tommy, now. Yeah. And then all Tommy does is like, Mm-mm-mm. don't fuck with me because of stuff and things. You already know he's in a fucking bad spot. And yeah. and the only thing that you do here is kicks he kicks the shit out of these two guys and then tells Tony not to ask for what he can't take. How about kicks this? Kicks the shit out of his own guys, PS. Yes. Wrong and two then, guys. Yeah. Don't ask for what you can't take. He basically called you out on the carpet. Somebody's getting shot in that situation, just FYI. And it's probably yeah. going to be the Italian dude here. Yeah. And the Italian, I don't know where uh, our heroin dealers are getting their intelligence from, but this guy is far from broke and far from hanging on by a thread. He's got dudes coming out his ass. He's handing out briefcases full of money like it ain't yes. no thing. He's not hanging on by, and he's out thwarting the cops at every move. Yeah. Like, he's doing fine. Yeah. From, it seems from to every- me like you're getting bad intel, and he's just stupid and greedy. Yes. But we cut here to Jake, who's an art student. And he has flashbacks at a free China protest uh, to back to Tiananmen Square where his dad was killed and yada, yada. So, and we cut to him after this where he draws, he, he likes to apparently draw uh, butt naked bitches and dragons in the background. And then he gets asked out by the, the naked girl subject that he's drawing to like That's go to this. That's how it's Party. worked out at every class I've modeled that. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing was was confusing. I'm like, well, he's an art student, and 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 this is this is what this is what really pisses me off about this this whole thing, because he gets asked out by the the hot blonde chick here. He goes to this party where there's like a secret knock to get in or whatever. He goes in, and it's like all the free China people that are that are in this party so he gets tricked and you know he's asked to join in in the free china efforts it cuts to tony strong arming chang and then things get a little shooty tony shoots chang jake sees the murder and then starts kicking ass everywhere bullets are spraying all over the place jake gets on his motorcycle and like rides through the whole thing And what I don't get here is Tony's like, oh, my God, Jake saw me shoot this guy. I got to kill him. So you spray bullets across this whole party. Everybody's a fucking witness now. What the fuck are we doing here? Like, this goes to your point that he's dumb. Oh, he's dumb as dog shit. This whole thing. The whole setup and premise is dumb. First off, he's an art student and he accepted a date from a girl. (laughs) 
I didn't know this was science fiction. <laughs> so, <laughs> this movie should have ended. When he got invited by the girl, like, oh, you look, well, go have dinner with me. And she takes him in and he's like, ah, free China. It was all a setup. And how else was I supposed to get you here? Brandon Lee should just kick the shit out of everybody at this party and then just leave. And that's yes. the movie. Just show me an hour and a half of him just destroying everybody. You can still have Tommy shoot somebody. All this stuff, because it gets very yeah. confusing, I'm sure. Much like the plot of this film. But... <laughs> But it would have been a lot better if he did that because that would have at least been a more natural reaction because he gets set up and he's like, all right, I guess I'll have to say a few words. Like, dude, you're suffering from fucking trauma or you're not. Listen, the I, I'm almost positive there was a fuckload of reshoots to this because... I think there might have only been one or two shootouts in this movie. And then they were like, this movie's dog shit. The script is terrible. We need more shoot. There's like 17 full-on gun battle shootouts in this movie. <laughs> and that was the only thing that was interesting about it. That's why I liked it during puberty. I was like, fucking kill it and fucking it. Ah. Yeah. And you see like... I was basically it, Cornholio. You must bow down to the almighty bunghole. <laughs> Jake gets, a, gets away from Tony and his goons here, but he gets arrested. And while getting interrogated, after a 30-second sketch from Jake, the FBI realizes that Jake saw Serrano shoot Chang. And the FBI forces Jake to testify against Serrano because that's law enforcement. That is law enforcement. I think it would have been much better if Jake is doing his drawing and it turns out he's an impressionist or something and it looks more like a Picasso. Like the shooter had three eyes and a mouth on its head and like what the fuck is this, Jake? I would have I would have loved it if he was like a like he drew caricatures. <laughs> so Serrano's head is just giant with this tiny little body with a suit and tie. <laughs> Wearing a windmill hat. <laughs> No, by the way, just FYI, I I'm not going to be like, oh, I was this art uh, prodigy student in college. I was an art minor, okay? <laughs> like I said, you're not getting asked out by women. Exactly. Not so accepting I, I know. anyway. I, I know firsthand, right? Our but this drawing, gay. this drawing that he does, okay, and the style that he, in which he draws it and mm -hmm. sketches this out, that's going to take you a lot longer than 30 seconds. I know it's a movie, whatever. Also, if you look at the sketch and you look at the actor who plays Tony Serrano, they look nothing alike. He sketches this shit out and the FBI agent goes, that's fucking Tony Serrano. We've been trying to get him for 10 fucking years. I was like, that literally looks like every Dago mobster I've ever seen. Well, that, that's when I knew the FBI was in on it. It's like, come on. You're clearly here to fuck this kid over. Like, because you're right. The other thing looked like more like Art the Clown than it did Tony Serrano. <laughs> well, and not for nothing. I think Jake watched a few of our reviews because he was like, oh, you want to put me in like witness protection? But he was like, no, thanks, guys. I know how this fucking ends. And then they're like, we'll put a a case on you that you'll never get out of. And we can because, because it's law enforcement. That's blackmail. That is law enforcement. That was the most right. accurate line in the movie. This is blackmail. <laughs> no, it's law enforcement. Yeah, they're synonymous. <laughs> it's the same shit, dog. But the feds fly Jake here to Chicago where they put him up in this like shitty apartment with like three... FBI agents. Two agents then kill the third. They go after Jake. Jake kicks the shit out of them and escapes. And now the cops think that Jake killed all the agents because they got him like trapped in the alley and yada yada. The one thing that, that made me laugh here was when Jake's kicking ass and taking names. And then he goes and hides in like the closet thing or whatever. Mm -hmm. When the cop shoots, 
It's Jake. It's just a freeze frame. It's a freeze frame. And then random, I don't know, CGI, we'll call it CGI bullet holes just coming through. <laughs> this was so fucking ridiculous. It was bad. I don't know. I mean, I wish they would have taken these precautions on the crow. But... <laughs> You were correct. At first, I thought I had accidentally sat on the remote and paused it <laughs> until I saw the little white holes of the bullets coming through the closet. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? It looked like they did it in like PowerPoint. Yeah, that was literally, I think, Alec Baldwin's defense. <laughs> I just sat on it and then I saw the holes. Oh my God. But we see. That the feds are are all in on it, right? Mm -hmm. The cops have the phones tapped, so they know that Jake is innocent, and the feds are in on it. So we get this standoff here between Mace and Frank the Fed, and uh, <laughs> there's another shootout. Here's like now the second or third shootout, and Mace gets Jake in the car. They get away from the mob and and the dirty feds and yada yada, and. Again, I, I have these little favorite pieces of this movie. Like the freeze mm -hmm. frame is one. When Jake goes to meet the Fed, because he doesn't know that Frank the Fed is like in on shit. Yep. And then you get uh, Powers Booth come in and he's like, no, come with me and blah, blah, blah. And he takes out his gun and the Fed takes out his. And he's like, freeze. I'm, I'm a Fed. And he's like, no, you freeze. Freeze. I'm a cop. You freeze. Well, because it, it sounds like an eighth grader wrote it. You freeze. No, you freeze. I said it first. Dude, it's, it's like so dumb and dumber. It's it's ridiculous. Absolutely that's what I, ridiculous. That's it. I was like, oh my god, the script is just, and they didn't deviate from the script. Like at no point, both of these actors are are good actors, mm -hmm. right? They've been in a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. At no point when they're shooting this did they go, that's the line. Can we do a second take where we'd actually like say the shit that we would say? Yeah, this was called, um, I want to pay off my house. <laughs> yes. So I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. And let's just get out of here and get the paycheck. The shooting of this movie, I guarantee you, took 15 days. You were right. Mace and Jake then go to pay Frank a visit. Frank the Fed, and Jake's the wild card. He beats the hell out of Frank. And then Mace gets Frank to sing and get the info and spill the tea on this drug deal that's coming in. And they hatch this half-baked plan that Carla like reads Jake in on, where they're going to send him in and he's going to be mic'd up. And it's to, the plan is to get Serrano, which includes Jake being this pawn that he's probably going to get shot and yep. they, they get to Tony, Tony's favorite restaurant the next day. Things don't go as planned. Obviously. What? Frank the, I know. Right. Frank, the fed gets shot by Tony. The cops move in. Jake kicks ass again. And there's more shootout fun here. And then, you know, Jake ends up walking out with holding Tony like Jake, who is an art student is literally doing the cop's job this entire movie. You were correct. That's why, like, when I... I think I talked about Rapid Fire before when we were talking about The Crow or even Showdown. Yeah. Um, Where I was like, I referred to Brandon Lee as a cop in Rapid Fire because that's what I thought he was. I <laughs> forgot he was a fucking student. <laughs> Like, at least, I think they all, the only reason they made him an art student is so they can get the, the sketch scene with the cops at the beginning. It, because I don't even should, get it. They should have just made him a Crim J student. Like, he's a criminal justice student that wants to, like, go into law enforcement or something. Because he literally does a better job at copping than all the cops. Yeah, how about how about he was a cop? with a degree in criminal justice and a minor in art. <laughs> yes. You show that he's still the same cultured person. You just make it a lot more fucking believable. 
Yes, exactly. That a college student <laughs> is cleaning up the mob and an international heroin thing. By the by the by the way, I know I mentioned I was an art minor when I was in college. Mm-hmm. So I took a lot of classes with art majors, mm-hmm. like who took the shit like super serious. There's not a single one of these motherfuckers that is kicking this much ass. I know you're like, oh, they're not they're not gonna get the chick. Yeah, that's part of it. The other part is, I, dude, they would they would twist their ankle walking into the police station. They're not kicking anybody's ass. And I've I've never seen an art student with a fucking six pack before either. Just FYI, <laughs> they don't go to the gym. No, I would have believed more that he was an employee at McDonald's than he was a fucking <laughs> art student in this. Because I've seen some tough looking dudes at McDonald's. <laughs> oh, I've seen some good fights. You should have just made him a, wa- a Waffle House employee. That's <clears throat> way more believable. I've seen Waffle House employees kick ass. Serrano comes in all fucked up and just shoots one of the cooks, and he's like, now it's time for revenge. Oh, so- Hey, kid, how'd you learn to draw like that? In prison. Well, and we get this, like, confrontation between Mace and Jake here about the tape recording. Mm-hmm. So Jake like knocks Mace out, walks away, and Carla goes after Jake and tells him that she has his dad's file that he's been wanting to see, this government file that he couldn't get in the whole like Tiananmen Square of it all, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I like what her and- excuse is here, too, because she's like, there, she chases after him and he goes, this guy doesn't care like who gets fucking hurt. And yeah. she's like, yeah, but he's still the best cop I've ever known. <laughs> then you know shitty cops, lady. <laughs> These cops are terrible that you're associating with. Because that is the wrong place to be. As a He's like, I'll kill every a- civilian on this planet so long as I get the fucking <laughs> heroin guy. No. Wrong. Wrong move across oh, the powers, board. Powers Booth is all about scorched earth. He Dude. was like, I will fucking murk everybody to get this one guy seriously it's it's a little much and the excuse of well he's a good cop and then the fucking innuendo you're throwing out i know a fucking honeypot when i see it i got <laughs> something i know you've been wanting to get your hands on it's like what are you talking about your dad's file no i want some titties i almost because, died like three times in a week well i want to get laid before i fucking die not for nothing though she's like oh i got your dad's file and come to my place and i'll show you the dad's file and they talk about like his his dad's death and you know what gets me really hot and wanting to have sex it's talking about my dead dad getting run over by a tank in tiananmen square Dude, and i'm like too? i'm like you know what this might sound a little weird but i got a boner oh like i'm chubbing up right now just thinking about it <laughs> <laughs> it's insane like but Talk about an aphrodisiac. Just talk about dead relatives, dude. I'm ready to go to pound town. We, did, we talked a little bit about this in the pre-show. But this is literally my favorite part of the movie. Mm-hmm. Because they 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 start banging it out here. And you're like, okay, cool. Sex scene. All right. Nice and sexy. We got some nice sexy music. Everything. What the fuck is going on here? It just starts cutting away. And they're like the sex scene is part of a montage. Which tells me that the sex lasted weeks because, like, <laughs> that's I, I'm not mistaken. That's what a montage is. It's like this elongated period of time that you shorten to show the passage of time. And they're showing the sex, and then, like, Powers Booth going to investigate and going to the laundry, and then uh, the Asian dude, Tommy, looking menacingly. And then they sprinkle in a little light racism with like, look, Asians are doing laundry. And I think they did this. I think they pulled that stunt mainly because, you know, somebody at the studio was watching this at a test screening and was like, yeah, I'm really uncomfortable with this half Asian kid (laughs) doing it with this full white lady. Like they're going to steal our women. And then they were like, I know what we'll do. Throw in a menacing Asian face, followed by some <laughs> Asians doing laundry, and I will feel so much better. We just got to balance this out. 
And they're like, Absolutely. dude, fucking, fucking whatever, bro. This, this can go down. You know, we've done so many reviews, hundreds of reviews. We've done so many. And there's, you know, in these reviews, I'm like, this is my favorite part. Or this is, this has got to go down in, in film history as the, the first time or the best scene or whatever. This has to go down in film history as the weirdest montage I have ever fucking seen on, on film. Is it possible this story is true? Yes, it is. This is weirder than the fucking, the mom doing laundry in, uh, in, mm. uh, never back down. Mm -hmm. Like that one took the cake until I saw this one. Yeah. This one's insane. And it's mainly just because you put it in the middle of a sex scene. Make yeah. the sex scene short. It's fine. Yes. You're not really showing anybody anything anyway. So yeah. here they're, you take the pants down. Boom. You know, they're having sex. Then run your montage. Yes. Scary Asian faced racism. Powers Booth. On to the next scene. It's fine. Yeah. And by yeah. the way, the song. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the songs people fuck to in the 80s and 90s in movies were terrible. I mean, look, I, I, I'll admit they can't all be like, take your breath away. But at the <laughs> same time, they don't have to be this. It was it did have a very like, I know this was 92, but this had a very 80s feel to it. The whole movie, including this song. Oh, I, I fully believe that the writers and directors of this movie were wearing like members only jackets still and had like almost like a mullet, but not really a mullet, but it was really gross and like, yeah, like super curly. And they were smoking like out of a cigarette holder. Like they were fucking weirdos. Well, Calling everybody baby like they were Al Davis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, great team, baby. All right, baby. That's a, that's a cut, baby. Right. <laughs> but but Jake here, even though he's like, oh, screw Mace Ryan, and I'm not going to help. And mm, 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 mm. Now, all of a sudden, he decides he wants to help because uh, Mace reminds him of his dad who got ran over by a tank. Okay, or whatever. we have to talk about this real quick. Because this develops in a scene where now they're father-son. Yeah. Because, because Mace comes over and rants after she's had sex, which... By the way, Mace, you're a terrible detective because she lives in a one-bedroom apartment and you can't smell the sex. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived with dudes in full-on houses where I've been like, yo, it smells like fucking pussy in here. What the <laughs> hell is going on? Who fucked last night and didn't air freshen? Like, just there's no way he didn't smell it. But then he comes in and he goes on this fucking rant about how much he likes the kid and like yeah. he doesn't he doesn't need me to say it. He knows. Knows what? You've known each <laughs> other for like two days. What the fuck are you talking about? All of a sudden he's your son and yeah. Brandon Lee standing behind, like, damn it. I'm disappointing my adopted father. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? It's so weird. This is bonkers. It's so weird. This is bonkers. And by the way, if you're trying to draw us back into the fact that he's like a college student, yeah. then explain how this seasoned detective who's made it onto this special squad as an intelligence officer is banging this little boy. Because <laughs> either he needs a father figure or he doesn't. And he's a grown ass man fucking this adult woman. You want the baby boy's hole, you gotta pay the troll toll. You gotta pay the troll toll to get in. So Mace now wires up Jake with apparently this, this wire contraption that they got from like fucking Radio Shack. Sends him into the laundry place. Jake gets into the laundry, but Mace and, and Carla get taken hostage. Like they're outside like monitoring. They get taken hostage by Tommy's men. Jake sees this comes crashing through the office window to save them. Jake kicks ass once again. Mace gets shot and Tommy runs away. Like all hell is breaking loose. More, more gunplay here. And Carla and Jake go after Tommy. As Tommy has his dudes like set the place on fire. 
we have to back up because once again, Mace Windu or whatever the fuck his name is, <laughs> Power Spoon's character, devises another moronic plan. Yes. Where these are fresh off the boat Chinese immigrants working in this gigantic laundromat. And Brandon Lee walks in with his white ass and fucking eyeglasses and a bandana and fools everybody because he speaks Chinese. And the guy goes, speak English. And he just falls on his knees and speaks more Chinese. And they're like, clearly he's an immigrant. Get him up and moving. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're a fucking like you are clearly here undercover. And this is terrible. You look like you're walking onto the set of Laverne and Shirley. I guess. <laughs> You're going to put a glove on a bottle and wave bye-bye to it. Cut the shit. This is a terrible plan. Oh, this is the worst plan. And the battery pack, or the, I don't know, he puts like a whole Walkman, like, <laughs> on, his, on his back. Here's and my I'm Casio. Like, good luck. <laughs> and by the way, here's a tight shirt to go around it. <laughs> like, the minute you walk by somebody, they're like, why does that guy have a giant battery pack on his back? You were correct. Well, and Jay, you know, Jake does some more, you know, like he's fucking up dudes. He does even more karate. And he has the the he has to fight the final goon before he gets Which, to the big bad. Uh hot tip, guys. If you're in a uh, action movie and this is the final bad guy or the bad guy you're up against, yeah. you should probably just go away. Go home, call it a day. Because this yes. dude is the bad guy in every movie, and he's yes. fucking amazing in every movie. He, he is bad ass. I love this dude. But for real, we get we get this fight right between them two. Jake finally gets to Tommy. They have their little final fight, and they fight onto the tracks of like the L, where Jake gets Tommy electrocuted and he gets hit by a train. Is it over yet? No. Nope. It's not. Jake has to go into the burning laundry now to find and save his new stepdaddy, Mace. And he does what he couldn't do with his dad here. He saves Mace and gets him to the ambulance and saves his life. And Which is so racist. Like, I'm not saving I mean, my real biological Chinese father, but my white new daddy? Fuck yeah, I'm getting him oh, out. Oh, I'm... I'm yeah, it's his white savior. <laughs> he devised two plans that almost got me killed in less than 24 hours. Yeah, I'm pulling him out. Because he said he movie. likes me. He didn't even be like, when Powers Booth does his rant in, yeah. in Withers' apartment, he's not like, oh my God, this guy reminds me of my son that died yeah. and I love this yeah. kid and I can't, like, I feel so terrible. But he just goes, man. I really like, like that guy. I like that kid. <laughs> I like that kid. Maybe you should have told him. I don't have to say something like that. How desperate is this fucking Brandon Lee character for a fucking father figure at this point? Like, oh my God, Jake, you don't need a father this bad. You're no. banging fucking full grown women. You're like a 19 year old college student and you're just smashing 30 year old detectives like it ain't no thing. Yeah, you're doing you're doing okay on your yeah, own, guy. You're pretty you're well adjusted. Cool. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but you don't... Nope. He's like my white stepdad's in there. I'm <laughs> saving him. You know that was again. I go to like a network exec who had just a shitty fucking stepkid, and he's like, write this into the plot. I'm gonna show this little bastard a thing or two. Hell yes. What happens in Rapid Fire Two is Mace gets fucking Jake killed. Okay, that's what happens next. He, what? No, what he does is he marries Jake's mom. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, stop banging my mom, Mace. <laughs> You're not my real dad. They go through some real problems. I like that one. We should write that one too. Um, no, dude, <laughs> this movie is dog shit. It's so bad it's it's laughably bad like there's movies that we've done that i'm like i i cannot watch this like if it's on i have a visceral reaction and i have to turn it off this movie is like i could watch this movie if i'm trying to take a nap because i'll just 
my nap will be great because I'll be giggling as I as I fall asleep because it's it's laughably bad. Like I don't have a visceral reaction. It's just one of those movies that you're just like, this is fucking ridiculous. Well, th- I think this is this would be my hot tip uh, for anybody trying to make a movie like this, right? The shootouts are what we're all coming for. The karate mm-hmm. is what we're all coming for. Yep. Stop making your plot uh, plot complicated. Yep. Stop tr- tying shit to like major events to tie us in like Tiananmen Square or 9-11, which we're still getting fucking comments about on Remember Me. Like, you just, there are other things that happen that you don't have to, like, you're overcomplicating it. It doesn't need to do all this. No, it's an action movie. You shorten it down. He doesn't even need fucking, they could be reluctant partners, like Lethal Weapon. He doesn't need a father figure and this weird, like, I'm not going to tell the kid I like him because he already knows. Fuck off, dude. You're rela- How would he know you like him? You've tried to get him killed since you <laughs> met him. And your job's to de-escalate. And by the way, to your point, you've known him for two days. Yes. It ain't like that. Like, you no. don't know me like that, bro. Settle <laughs> the fuck down. The only reason you like me is because I'm doing all your work for you. That's it. Yes, the, all of these, all of the characters in this movie are emotionally crippled. Yes. Because the detective's known him for two days and she's like, I'm getting me some sweet dick. But also, <laughs> my stepdad is about to become your stepdad. This whole thing is just fucking this, weird. This, and they, this whole thing is turning into oh, a strange Pornhub video. Or Cruel Intentions. They yes. just overcomplicated everything with the plot and they lost point. Like movies like The Expendables, yeah. right? There's really no, this is the bad guy. We got to stop the bad guy and we're going to kill everybody along the way. Done. done That's done. what you should have done. done here. And you fucking didn't. You tried yeah. to bring dads into it and weird sex scene montages with terrible music behind it and racism. And it yeah. was just political commentary. Like, stop the shit. Come yes. on. Just give me the boomala boomala. Give me the bad guy. Give me the good guy. And then we're done. Yeah. I don't need I don't need all the other shit. Yeah. But pretty much. Now, to uh to anybody that wants to watch it, I mean, I guess, but uh I I I I'd skip by this one. You gotta pay for it to watch it. So yes. Definitely, yeah, definitely a skip for me. And by the way, Amazon, three seventy nine to rent, four ninety nine to buy. Don't force me into buying this piece of shit, okay? Because I almost clicked the buy button here. Because I'm like, it's only a dollar more. That's a big dollar. Yeah, you know what? Fuck you, Amazon, for even putting that in my head. So <laughs> I'm out. That's all That's I got. Fucking, yeah, no. No, nope, I got nothing. Right. This movie's fucking terrible. For, for Corey, I'm Armando. This is Kiss the Reviews. And this was 1992's Rapid Fire.